Thanks for joining us today on Coastal and Progressive Rainbow Forum on Society Bites Radio. Today we will be speaking with Keisha Bell, and we have a wonderful uh, opportunity to speak with hopefully the new representative from District 70. And uh, we are going to let her tell us a little bit about She's got an incredible background. She is a lawyer and has done incredible things in her career to help people. So, Keisha, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to have this opportunity to reintroduce myself, and I'm looking forward to hopefully being the next uh, state representative for District 70. Excellent. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the uh, – start off by first, you can summarize maybe some of your top uh, three or four or five uh, issues that you want to address, and then we'll try to delve into some of these and go into them a little bit in detail here. Okay. Um, well, as you know, District 70 is – you pretty much can choose <laughs> any issue that's going on uh, in a negative way. It probably uh, – is something that somebody in District 70 can relate to. So um, as far as looking for different topics that, you know, to address as I campaign this 2020 year, uh, I had a wide range of choices to choose from. And what I did before I actually go into um, the the ones that I'm going to highlight a little bit is I, um, as some people remember, I did run for this seat in 2018. And after uh, losing the the race by a little over 3,000 votes against a very strong incumbent, um, you know, someone who had been elected for a number of years, I didn't uh, stop. I continued to travel the District 70 to do what I like to call a listening tour. I found that it was very important to maintain connections throughout District 70, but I really wanted to know, you know, the issues that the community members thought were important to them, knowing that I plan on uh, doing what I'm doing now is pursuing the the seat again. So I wanted to definitely capture a, a platform that was related to those that live and work in District 70. So the four highlighted points, and again, you know, I am open to talking about other things that I'm not going to highlight right now, but I found that a large number of discussions that I had centered around affordable health care, and in particularly um, as it relates to mental health issues and also expanding Medicaid, which is really important. Obviously, we are in a battle with our public education system. Here, I campaigned on both health care and public education in 2018. Those things uh, have not changed. If anything, those uh, topic areas have gotten worse. And we definitely need strong representation out of 70 uh, to, to really horn in on these issues up in Tallahassee. So I'm 100% for public education. I was in uh, Tallahassee earlier uh, this year, actually at a the public education rally. And we can talk a little bit about that later if you want. But uh, public education is still something that I'm always talking about. Uh, of course, you know, we have a huge issue with climate change. One of the things that I appreciated when I campaigned in 2018, which I didn't really hear um, over here in District 70, and I'm located in Pinellas County currently um, during this interview, but I, I found myself in a lot of conversations about the environment, as particularly in, when I traveled to Manatee in Sarasota County. And so really kind of as a response to that, and I did talk a lot about it when I campaigned in 2018, but I wanted to make sure that it was one of my highlighted uh, points this year because it really is a huge issue. Uh, so I want to try to continue to establish relationships with experts in the environmental area uh, so that we can, you know, hopefully get rid of or better the situation with future red tides and other solutions that, and for me to hopefully be a part of presenting solutions to the threat of climate change. And always, always, always anti-discrimination uh, legislation is a top priority of mine. So those are like four, four things out of the gate that I, I definitely found myself in a large number of conversations about when I traveled throughout the different counties in District 70. 
Excellent. Uh, that, uh, Keisha, you always say things so well, and that, that, that is excellent. Let's go back to number one up here, and let's talk about okay. the affordable health care and expanding Medicaid. That's a big area. Mm-hmm. You, as you know, our current administration in Washington is trying to, to and, and it, even in, in Florida here, too, they're trying to cut back, and this is not acceptable. As, right. Uh, and we have many, many people in this country who are struggling, and, and yeah. I, 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 want, I want to divert here and just say something because it's why this is so important. You know, the economy is not well if, if, if you are a lot of the working people. It's well if you're wealthy. Mm-hmm. Yes, the, 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 economy, mm-hmm. the, the economy is well, and it, the, the Trump administration's uh, robbed from the poor to give to the rich tax cut, quote, unquote. You know, th- this mm-hmm. type of thing is mm-hmm. going to come back to haunt us more, and it's already doing it. So on the health care yeah. issue and, the, and the expand Medicaid, let's go into some of this and talk about what some of your plans are there to how, how this can help people. Because, you know, many people struggle with this, and, and not only in District 70, but all across the state, as, you, as, you, as you, I'm sure yes. you're aware. Yes. Well, really across the nation. <laughs> I mean, there's only right, across few, the nation. It, it is. It, it, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm just happy that a part of my team that this is very important was I have some people who I consider to be experts in this area who will, you know, help me design something and help me strategize as to how to really be a strong voice once I get in Tallahassee about this. Because as you said, it's truly affecting us and the economy does not work for people who are not well. People should not have to work two, three, four jobs just to kind of make it. It's those stresses that people have in their exactly. day-to-day lives that combinate major health crises. And we need to do something because we are a state that can definitely address this, I believe, but we have to elect legislators who truly are serious with addressing these issues and bringing solutions to it. So. I know that um, we've had a lot of discussions with, you know, a couple of members of my intimate circle um, that's helping me. So, you know, design things that I can bring forward. That's realistic. I mean, I know that the battle is going to be hard because of our current, you know, numbers in Tallahassee. But that, in my opinion, does not mean that we need to go to sleep with the people that we represent. 70 needs strong representation. I offer that. This is something that's very serious. Um, a very serious issue, and you know, by electing me, it's something that people will know that they would have a strong advocate for. Exactly, and we we have so many people who are in need. Uh, I, I'm going to relate a little story to you here, okay, real quick, mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. just I'm sure you've heard these before. We, I I'm, I serve as you probably know on a lot of boards and 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 a lot of different organizations I'm involved with. Uh, mm-hmm. We help a lot of people who are struggling, and. Uh, we had a case come in here. Just we well, had two of them. There's two of them, uh, but but they're they're both almost the same thing. One of them, a uh, poor young lady, she's being exploited. She's working for nine dollars an hour, and and she was mm. so afraid of everything that her boss her boss was forcing her to work sixty and seventy hours a week with no overtime, no overtime pay. Mm. This is outrageous. Mm-hmm. You no, know, but we, mm-hmm. we actually got got her into another job and helped her out. Another young man. Okay. He, he signed up. He was first being exploited by the wages he was being paid uh, at mm-hmm. setting $12 an hour for, for a trainee electrician, you know, and this mm-hmm. was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And so what happened, uh, he thought he had insurance. He was paying X number mm-hmm. of dollars uh, uh, um, a month in, uh, out of his pay, his meager pay that he got. Mm-hmm. And then for he thought of health insurance. Well, he gets sick the first time he gets sick. He has to go to see the doctor, and he finds out. Guess what his deductible was, and everyone in that company deductible was six thousand dollar deductible. <gasps> that is ridiculous. Yes. Who in the world who makes twelve dollars an hour can afford to have a six thousand dollar deductible? And that should be unlawful. Mm-hmm. And and that's, yes, and that's, I agree and, with and that, you. And 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 that is happening. Uh, Keisha, it's happening time after time again. As I'm sure you, you're aware of, and 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 people. And these, it hurts people. It hurts their family fabric. Yeah. It hurts everything. They're trying to struggle, trying to trying to provide yeah. food. In this case, for for, for a, a wife and a child, you know, and it's terrible. Yeah. You know, and it we, is terrible. I, it is. It's definitely terrible. It, it had. I know so many people who are really, literally afraid to get sick 
Some have insurance, some do not have insurance, and it seems like it contradicts itself, especially if it's someone who know that they they knowingly have insurance, yet they still will not go, you know, if they get a call, a cough, a headache, uh, any kind of injury, people are doing self-care at home, even if they have medication. So by the time that someone feels as if they're ready to go and see a medical expert, what could have been a small situation in the beginning is now this elaborate situation, which of course then that's for financial debt that someone may get in. It's just more, you know, putting them at the bottom and as people are trying to climb up. So, I mean, this is something that definitely needs to be addressed. The other thing with that that I found is that there are a number of people with a lot of part-time jobs because employers, you know, at certain places are not giving full-time pay because of the benefits of insurance and other benefits, of course. But I know and have heard of a number of situations where people are, they don't have insurance because the employer is only offering part-time jobs. And, and that that thought process needs to be addressed as well. If we're talking about really trying to invest in the people in the state so that we can be strong as a mechanism, you know, we have to make sure that people have health care. It's, it's exactly. like you say, it's unbelievable. It, it, it is unbelievable. One, and so, so one many thing that I would talk- like to sh- Go ahead, mm-hmm, yes, please. Mm-hmm. No, one thing that I would like to share, you, I, I don't know if, you know, how many people know this. A, a few people know it in my county, but this past year I ended up losing my grandmother, one of my grandmothers. And I still believe that if she had proper health care uh, navigators to help her through the system, I think that, you know, she would still be alive today. But these are other things when we start talking about health care resources and bringing to different communities that we need to really invest in. Because, again, if you can catch situations early on, then that, that will, you know, inhibit some of the other uh, medical issues that someone can have, monetary issues that someone could have. But we have to have these things as priorities. And we're not at that point, I don't believe, in this state, but we definitely can be, and we deserve to be as Floridians. Right, exactly. And and you, you hit the nail on the head there. A lot of this can be done with preventive care, and if people have, the, and mm-hmm. like you said, the right, the right navigators. You know, some of the people mm-hmm. that we deal, we, we work with here, too, the same thing. I just had to go yesterday. I, I was I was with a, a, a client, and, and, the, and the poor guy, he was totally confused, and he did not know he was supposed mm-hmm. to be seeing a specialist. He got, he, and he, it's a long story. I won't go into all because it's more important to talk about these other issues. But anyway, it happens so often. People do not know who to talk mm-hmm. to. They don't have the proper guidance, and, and they don't right. have, the, have, the, have the proper uh, contact points and have things explained to them so they can get the medical right. care they need and, 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 exactly. navigate, and navigate a system that is increasingly more complex to get through. So that's, exactly. That's exactly. Uh, exactly. And, um, but can you, uh, in, in the, what do you have any ideas in the healthcare here that you could, you could uh, go on and tell us a little bit about uh, that? Yes. Yeah, so aside from, um, so I kind of touched base a little bit on, well, definitely I'm a strong advocate for uh, the expansion of Medicaid, uh, for sure. Uh, I kind of touched a little bit on the, the navigator aspect. I'm, I'm in process now. I have someone on my team who is great as far as um, the development of policies and legislation, and I've been in conversation with her uh, with a few ideas as we move forward to actually the qualifying period. And I just kind of want, you know, people to be clear, I will definitely be on the ballot. (laughs) But uh, as far as campaigning right now, the qualifying period is actually in June. And and right now, as I was um, talking to, you know, my team, we just want to make sure that we have a platform that really speaks to the people and address some things as far as what we can do in Tallahassee. So I am in conversation right now with someone with uh, the, uh, a very strong background in, in health care and um, in, in health policy and legislation. And, and I'm looking forward to how, you know, our, how, what that looks like once we, once we near the part of me actually introducing that in a more formal setting. Excellent. And, and, I hope we can get you down to Manatee and Sarasota counties to, to, to talk on some of these. Yes, definitely. Well. 
So, yes, yes, um, for sure. Okay. Um, should we talk a little bit? Of, let's go over to uh, well, uh, our public education a little bit here too. I want to be mm. sure we yeah. we're probably.